and welcome to the buzz about books right now i'm joined by lucy beresford with her book happy relationships at home work and play welcome lucy thank you, How are you? i'm really well um, so you're a uh, psychotherapist and you have a practice in london yes i do and um, quite a lot of the book came out of some of the conversations that I have either in my private practice or mm. the mental hospital where I work or even just you know friends and family because what I discovered is that there's always one relationship mm. in our lives that isn't going quite the way that we want it to and that's what the book addresses. And it's very interesting because what you do is you actually put um, letters from people yes. um, you know talking about an issue that they have uh, it's always a relationship with family or siblings or work colleagues or exactly and friends and, and that format mm. of the letter I think is is quite widely recognized a sort of agony aunt format mm. I'm an agony aunt for a magazine for a healthy magazine so it was a format that I completely understood and also felt really worked I think people you know surreptitiously in the news agents will flick yeah. to a magazine yeah. specifically to that page because they were they, they have relationship issues themselves so I quite like to see how other people are dealing with them um, because I think we recognize that relationships are the meat and drink of our lives you know they they are the things that really excite us but also the things that can wind us up and in your observations what do you think it is that makes it so difficult for us to just simply get along with people you think it'd be easier and mm. yet it's so not and it's deeply disturbing when you can't get along with somebody and you want to. Yes, well I think, I think part of the problem is that we, um, you know, we have our own needs and we have our own opinions and we have our own life plan, uh, but when we're in a relationship with someone else we have to compromise or accommodate and sometimes we don't want to do that or sometimes we've been in a relationship let's say with our parents or with our siblings where the dynamic changes over the years mm. you know you're one type of person in the beginning you're a very sort of needy child mm. and then you're expected to grow up and mature and maybe have a different relationship with these very same people yeah. at the same time your parents haven't suddenly become grown-ups they were grown-ups all the time <laughs> so they don't feel they need to change so there's a lot of negotiation that has to happen in relationships and we're just not very good at that because that might mean giving away some mm. of our power, giving away some of our, our needs. That's true. And uh, the one thing you really emphasise very early on in the book is it's about the relationship with yourself. That's yes. key to everything. Yes. Um, the first chapter deals with the relationship with yourself. You can't really expect to have a good and healthy relationship mm. with other people if you actually haven't got a very good or healthy relationship mm. with yourself. And that's partly because um, you, you need to understand yourself well enough to, to get your needs met when you're in another relationship and also to be able to work out what your blind spots are, what your hang-ups are and to be able to see whether in a, in a conflict situation or in a sort of ongoing niggling situation, mm. how much of that is actually you. Mm. We spend a lot of time, and I think this, this will um, probably, you'll recognise this, you know, we, we hear people whinging about a particular relationship. Yeah. I can't get on with my boss, can't get on with my sister, you know, really wound up about my mother or whatever. We can have those conversations for months, mm -hmm. for years, yes, without actually acknowledging yeah. that we might have a part to play, or we invariably do have a part to mm. play in this, that actually it's something we could be doing, we could be changing. And particularly in, in intimate relationships, sometimes it's about saying, this is no longer working for me, mm -hmm. um, I'm not feeling fulfilled, um, it, it's, it's stuff about me. I, I'm trying to pretend that it's all mm. about my partner, but actually it's about me. Do you think people get scared to get empowered because then they really know it is actually down to them? That's yeah. kind of the scary point. It's much easier saying, yeah. you know, my, yeah. my career is going nowhere because my boss is horrible or, you know, my marriage is a nightmare because my husband does this or my husband does that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's possibly not as black and white or as clear cut as that. Um, you know, it takes two people to make a relationship yeah. and at the same time it, it takes two people to, to muddle it. Something I really like about it is it makes you because I was reading the chapter about you know your role in the family and the script you play and how you bring that into the to your you bring that to your relationships with your friends even like yes. you might play a certain type of role like a subservient person if you're subservient in your family like you look for p certain people Definitely. to fulfill the roles of those the family almost. yes and it's also because that's what you're familiar with yeah it's if you are if you've always been the people pleaser or if you've always been the comedian or if you've always been the high achiever you're going to find it very hard to be a completely different person yeah. in your study life your career life your um, your hobby life you know we can find that we we, we think that we're um, being different because you know nobody gets to see me as um, the photographer or the mm -hmm. amateur dramatic person because they think I'm just such a but actually when it comes down to the relationships you're probably no different 
to your boss, to how you are with other people in your family, for example. Yeah. So it's cracking that code, working out what kind of person you really are and what, you're, what you need to work on, what are your strengths and weaknesses. Um, and that will give you a sort of better prep for sorting out other relationship mm. um, worries and niggles in your life. The thing I really love about this book is you don't really read a lot about um, how to deal with friends. <laughs> and you don't, because you know, I think mainly when people go to therapy, I'm assuming that quite a lot of people go because of a family member or something that they're dealing with, and, but it's always related with the family member of some mm. sort. Mm. Um, but you, it's very rare that we ever really talk about the issues with friendships and, and you know, toxic friendships. Yes. And when it's not good and when you should let it go. and. And yet, to spot the signs. interestingly enough, um, particularly if you have children of school age, of course that's often what they bring to you and a lot of parents can feel very under-equipped and what they don't see is that actually in their own lives they probably also have issues around friendship. And I, I think that um, quite a lot of my friends are also talking about other friendships. I think you know, within a gang you're often yeah. always talking about one other person. That, that I think just gets translated across, across the nations and across societies. Yeah. So it seemed to me a, you know, a really important chapter to have. Mm. How to have a, a good relationship with a friendship and also with a friend and also to almost conduct an audit if you think a friendship has perhaps outlived its yeah. Uh, usefulness is it yeah. is it past its sell by date because I think you know life is too short to keep um, you know flogging a dead horse that actually if, <laughs> if something has just yeah. you know yeah. past its sell by date then you have to have permission to be to give yourself permission to be able to say I think actually the time has come to you know call time yeah. on this relationship yeah. um, some relationships can be renegotiated and you can definitely have conversations with friends and you say you know I didn't like it when you did this and they'll say well I was very upset when you did that and you come to some accommodation and that's great too but eventually there may come a time and it doesn't have to be with friends it could mm -hmm. be with family members mm -hmm. as well that it's about saying what do I need for my own ful uh, you know self self fulfillment but also yeah. peace of mind is there a relationship which is just too stressful for its mm -hmm. own good yeah. and it is about giving yourself permission to say actually I'm going to have to give my mother a bit of space at the moment. It, mm. it's, I'm going to have to, you know, maybe not speak to my brother or whatever it might be yeah. as much as a, a best friend situation because, frankly, because you can, because of course in the other chapter about um, work relationships, mm. it's less easy to do that. You know, you've got stuck to sort with of, them. you're yeah, you've stuck got to make with it them, work. you've got to yeah. make it work in a different way. Yeah. Um, particularly in this current economic climate. Admittedly, the jobless figures have gone down, but you know there is this sense that you can't just up and leave just because your boss or your um, junior is, is winding you up. So you do have to treat those relationships slightly differently. I don't know how but, many um, people I've met who just hate their work because yes. someone's making their life hell. Yes. Or, but what's know. so interesting about that is, again, it mm. could link back to mm. earlier problems. Um, certainly I've seen uh, in my uh, practice a lot of people who come to me complaining about their boss or their um, peer or their colleague but actually what we've discovered is what they're really agitated about is an unresolved uh, relationship tension with perhaps their father or an unresolved relationship tension with a sibling that is getting replayed out within the mm. workplace and getting it's projected onto this colleague who for, you know, could very easily be a very difficult person, but it touches the mm. individual even more exquisitely because it's an echo of something in the past. It's absolutely fascinating. You, can I come and see you, please? <laughs> you, I mean, seriously, you can fix my the couch. world. <laughs> yes, can I lie on your couch, please? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a really, really great read. I my think pleasure. everyone should have this on their shelf. Thank you. As, as, as a fix it to their life. Yes. Oh. And, and the key thing is fix you can kit. just dip into it. Yeah. If, you're, if yeah. your issue is yeah. about siblings, turn to that chapter first. Well, thank you very much, Lucy. Later. So that is uh, Happy Relationships at Home, Work and Play by Lucy Beresford.